Final Order Cutoff Comics for October 4th, 2021. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. Welcome to the latest episode of Final Order Cutoff Comics with VM Campos. Hey, that's me. This is the series where I talk about the Final Order Cutoff Comics. These are the comics you need to pre-order by this date to be guaranteed your copy. I'm going to browse the Previews World website, show you what I'm picking up, point out a cool thing or two here or there, and then you'll have the knowledge to pre-order your own comics from your local comic shop. Tell them VM Campos sent you. I believe you'll get 69% off your order if you do. Anyway, let's talk about the comics. All right, switching over to the Previews World website, I'm logged into Pullbox and I'm ready to see what's the last chance to pre-order. So let's check it out. Just starting from the top here in the order that they've got over at Image Comics. The main thing that I'm ordering at Image Comics at the moment, even though there are clearly a lot of amazing things, is the latest issue of Mirka and Dolfo's Sweet Paprika. I'm ordering every variant cover here. Yes, even the NSFW cover. Don't tell my mom. But this has been a very well-drawn, fun, real series, even though it's, it's a world populated with angels and devils. Basically, Paprika is looking for love but she's a workaholic, and her dad's really overbearing, and every time she gets nasty, he pops into her head. Well, there was a big revelation in issue number three, so I can't wait to see what will happen on the subsequent issues, number four, to see how that revelation plays out in the series. I'm picking up every one of the easily attainable covers, although there's a bunch of store-exclusive covers. So Sweet Paprika is a pick with image. One more image book that I thought was very interesting is What's the furthest place from here is a post-apocalyptic tale about children surviving in the apocalypse. It's a triple-sized first issue. Matthew Rosenberg is the writer, Tyler Boss is the artist, and a bunch of variant covers. Here's the variant cover that I'm picking up. This is fascinating. This is the Deluxe Edition 7-inch Record Edition. Check this out right here. Every issue of this post-apocalyptic coming-of-age series will have an extremely limited deluxe edition featuring an exclusive variant cover and a 7-inch record with two songs from some of today's best Indian punk bands recorded especially for this project. This is really cool. I've got mine reserved right here, but it's, you know, 10 times the price of a regular comic, but it comes with a record. I don't have a record player, but I want a copy of this variant cover because this is fascinating. Music and comics? They fit perfectly, don't you think? Do you listen to music when you read your comics? I know I do once in a while there, and it really affects the story. And it was really cool that the comic We Live had a soundtrack that you can hear off of YouTube and hear with a like, real-life artifact. So I'm picking this one up at Image Comics. Moving over to Dark Horse Comics, um, I'm not really picking up anything over at Dark Horse at the moment. I am reading some of their series, but none of them here are final order cutoff. Although there is a brand new Stranger Things trade paperback, if you uh, want more Stranger Things. I believe it's more YA focused. And then there's also the new Stranger Things, Tomb of Ibuen, Two of Four. Um, this is um, a story of... Uh, the kids look at look through Bob's possessions after his death, spoiler alert, and they find a brand new Dungeons and Dragons adventure to go through. So uh, I did get issue number one. I haven't finished reading it, so to decide for me to get uh, this one or not. But if you like Stranger Things, can't wait for the for the series, read some of the comics available from Dark Horse. Moving over to IDW Publishing, I'm currently picking up the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Um, I'm probably going to stop at issue 50 or 51. It's been a cool series, but I, I do want to uh, kind of focus on my budget a little bit more. And it's been a fun series, very cool art, with a story that can actually range from like very fun and juvenile to pretty serious. I'm picking up uh, Star Wars High Republic adventures over here at IDW. Um, IDW publishes Star Wars stuff besides Marvel, so whatever contract they have there. And um, I've just been picking this one up from the previous issues. It's one of these side stories with new characters. This is High Republic, which is taking place hundreds of years before the Skywalker saga, so I'm continuing that. And I'm also picking up the latest copy of The Last Ronin, so this is this uh, this is the future tale of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the final Turtles tale. Uh, issue number one sold out. It went into like fourth printings. 
and then uh, here's a brand new printing and uh, it's it's not a bad price at all because it's got here it, it's got basically behind the scenes stuff of issues two and three straight from the creators it's the hottest comic of 2021 and i can't wait to see all of this behind the scenes info it's a really cool story it's very mature it can be very sad at many points but i'm reading this the last ronin but that's what i'm picking up at idw moving over to dc comics what I am picking up is the Return to the Milestoneiverse. I've got Icon and Rocket Season 1, number 4 of 6. So this is the whole Milestone Returns. We've got Static, Icon, Hardware. It's the return of the Black-focused superheroes by Black creators from the 90s. It's been very cool to see how those stories were taken from the 90s. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. We're still dealing with the same issues of racism and xenophobia, misogyny, toxic masculinity, and so forth. And his is a brand new take on it all with the, the current generation. Wanted for completely effing up the global economy. Icon and Rocket, $150 million reward. This is issue four of six, season one. So I'm recommending it. I'm picking up the new Superman versus Lobo. This is two of three. It's the oversized black label. Uh, the first issue had a Simon Bisley cover, which was very cool. And then it's got interior art by Mirka Andolfo, written by Tim Seeley and Sarah Beatty. People were kind of not loving the big idea of the series. It's like way too current with social media and influencers and all of this stuff. And I still don't know how I fully feel about it. I just want there to be more fights between Lobo and, and Superman. And I want lots of violence because that's what Su uh, Lobo's all about. So we're going to see what happens here. Basically, they get transported to their own worlds. Lobo goes to Krypton and Superman goes to Zarnia. How did that happen? We'll go back and read issue number one. I have a variant cover by Osseo. I, I don't know what it looks like. I, I'm not going to get that one. I'm going to get the regular cover. No Bisley cover this time around. And it's only three issues, so let's see how it goes. I'm also picking up Task Force Z, or how are you pronouncing it? Task Force Z, Task Force Zeto, how are you pronouncing it? This is basically zombies in the Mar in the DC universe. Again, yes, after Deceased, we're just getting kind of another perspective on it. More zombies in the DC universe. I thought it was a very cool concept over at Deceased. Could be very affecting to think about these superheroes as ravenous zombies. Now this is going to focus more, it looks like, on the villains of things because we've got Red Hood and there's Bane, Evil Bane and Zombie Bane and all of that. So Task Force Z. And that's what I'm picking up at DC. Moving over to Marvel Comics, plenty of issues to check out. There's the Alien series and so forth. I'm going to get the Spider-Man number 78 Deadpool 30th anniversary because everyone loves to see Deadpool plus Spider-Man. There's an example of Rob Liefeld drawing Spider-Man, which there aren't that many examples, so that's pretty cool to see. There's, of course, so picking up Avengers number 50, which is legacy number 750, so a big old anniversary issue. It's always kind of cool to get those big anthology series, although I don't like that big anthology price. The Ron Lim, She-Hulk is pretty cool, very action-packed, but I'm just getting the regular cover. One more Marvel book. There's a brand new Venom series, even though it just ended in issue 200, so they're they're rebooting it again. And it's just a matter of picking which cover to get. There's a lot of cool ones. And I have to say, unfortunately, this is one of the few times that I'm not loving a Peach Momoko cover. It's very mannered. It's very inky. It's very... Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't really love this. I think it's just because it doesn't focus on the symbiote enough. If it was more focused in, I think I would like it a little better. So I'm not getting uh, the Momoko cover this time. I'm going to go with Inhuk Leek variant cover. Uh, they do very realistic style, which I like a lot, so that's the one I'm picking up. Brand new Venom series from Marvel. Moving over to Dynamite, there's plenty of great cosplay covers to enjoy from their various series that they're publishing. There's Barbarella, there's Deja Thoris versus John Carter of Mars, there's Sonya Versal, which is uh, dimension Hopping, issue number 9. Sonya's all over the dimensions. Here we have Blue Sonya. She wears leather, rides a motorcycle, and shoots guns. And Vengeance of Vampirella, which was the sequel to the series from back in the 90s. So they've all got cool cosplay covers. And those are some pics from Dynamite. Moving over to Boom Studios, we've got the latest printing of Basilisk. I have, I think, second printing, maybe first printing. But here we have a third printing of that series, which is very hot because I think it's going on to be um, uh, some sort of series. So there's like some spec behind it. And here we have a third printing. Back in the day, subsequent printings were trash and you would line the birdcage with it. Nowadays, they still have value. Obviously not as much as the first printing, but still subsequent printings are big bucks nowadays. 
And then we've also got some various Firefly books and such for you to check out if you're into Firefly. Moving over to just a bunch of the indie publishers, there's a lot to, to check out here. Here's what I'm picking up. So Blood Widow number one of four is debuting, and I don't know anything about this particular series, except that it comes on the pages of White Widow, which again, I don't know too much about that series either. But I wanted to check out an issue number one, and this is from Absolute Comics Group. Benny Powell, Dan Schkady, Pasquale Colano, and Jamie Tyndall. A variant over here, so... It's an issue number one, I'm gonna check it out. There's kind of also this metallic ink cover that I'm curious about. Like, are there cool accents in metallic ink here and there? I don't want to pay $9.99 for it, but you do you. And what's also intriguing me a lot is the lenticular version. So these are, these are straight from the 90s, metallic ink, lenticular covers. But back in the 90s, they didn't cost $20. So I'm going to pass on that. I'm just going to get the regular edition to see what the hubbub is about with this first issue number one. All right, so I'm going to check out this, this indie book, uh, female creator book from Source Point, Boston Metaphysical Society. This is by Madeline Holly Rosing and Gwyn Tavares. So I want to try out books by the not big publishers, some smaller creators, see what those are like. And oftentimes, you can find some real gems in there. So I'm checking this one out from Source Point Press. In the WTF category, I'm picking up Carriers Number 1. This is by Red 5 Comics. Fable, Gladius, Cherry Bomb, Dark Dove. No one has ever heard of these brave heroes yet, but they are the only things standing between the citizens of New York and the unseen terrors that lurk all around them. These are a band of weaponized pigeons. Yes, pigeon superheroes. Is this the first time this has ever happened in the history of comics? Vaguely shades of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but everyone always will have that if there's like four of the characters. Obviously their names have nothing to do with like TMNT and sort of thing. And so I'm getting this variant cover that just shows, yeah, pigeons with an attitude. And we'll wrap up the video with Gun Honey number one, third printing. This is the Adam Hughes cover variant, but it's the third printing and it's got metallic ink. So again, where, where's the ink gonna go? So this has been a series that's been blowing up. Here's the third printing of it. Debut graphic novel from award-winning writer and co-founder of Hard Case Crime Publishing, Charles Ardai. So the story is that notorious weapons smuggler Joanna Tan is enlisted by the US government. Find the man she set loose and bring him down. Adam Hughes cover, interior art by Ang Hor King written by Charles Ardai. And so I'm picking this up from Titan Comics. And those are the comics I'm looking out for during the final order cutoff date. There's some number ones, there's some continuing series, there's some variant covers, there's some spec picks here and there. What do you think? What are you picking up? What do you like? What did I miss? What should be on my radar? Where did I get it right? Tell me about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, consider pressing the join button on YouTube to become part of the VMC crew to unlock exclusive content, and to keep me funded, and to keep me motivated. It means a lot when people join the VMC crew and pledge, 99 cents at a time, to keep me going. Really appreciate it. If you can't quite pledge at the moment, no worries. Simply like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, battle the Minotaur, do all that good stuff. Tell people all about these comic book videos that VM Campos publishes every single week. Help me spread the word. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you next time.